Hi, Bean. Hello, and welcome to my channel, Haley Marie Vintage. Today, I'm going to take you along thrifting with me. I have a big thrift day plan. I believe I'm hitting at least six thrift stores and I think one antique mall. I'm going to south of Seattle and I am going to Kent and Auburn, which has my favorite small thrift shops. I try to frequent those over Goodwill and Value Village because their prices have just gotten so wild. Today, my goal is actually vases. I've gotten very into floral arrangements. I go to the farmer's market and I buy about $30 worth of flowers every week. It's just kind of a nice way for me to like ground myself and connect with nature on my Sunday mornings. So what I kind of would like to do is I would like to start to curate a collection of vases where I can kind of decide what bouquet fits what vase vibe, if that makes sense. And then I'm also mainly looking at bowls. I eat a lot of soup in the winter and so I'm gonna go through bowls really quickly and I do try to run my dishwasher only when it's full. But lately I've been running out of bowls. Um, as far as the styling for this video, I have no strategy. Because these thrift shops are smaller, I don't always feel comfortable filming. So you're gonna just have to bear with me on what footage I decide to show, but at the very end of this video, there will for sure be a haul of everything I pick up today. All right, we're in our first store, which is the Vincent St. Paul in Auburn. I'm just looking at the glassware here first. They sometimes have some interesting ones. There are definitely pretty glassware here, but I'm kind of on a glassware ban because I own so much of it. I thought these flutes were really quite pretty. I did find this vase here, which is just like a single bloom vase and I really liked it. So I did go ahead and grab that one. And then they actually had a really filled out fabric section, which I don't remember from last time. They had like that kind of nice dark wolf feeling fabric, this gold like stripey fabric. Their fabrics were just really, really well built out. I really liked a lot here and I had to like rein myself in and be a little bit selective. I was excited by this blue corduroy and there was quite a lot of it. This was just pretty exciting. I thought this blooms was pretty, but it like wasn't the right texture for me. This quilt here was really cute. I wish I had grabbed it, but right behind me was an old lady who snatched it from me. So I did not get this quilt top, even though I wish I had. I did get this eyelet fabric, which is absolutely gorgeous. I love the little bows. And then I regret not getting both of these fabrics, the patchwork one and then this teacup one. I went back and forth. I talked myself out of it because it was not in my parameters. I did get this one though, which arguably was also not my parameters for fabric. So I don't know who I was kidding. I was debating this houndstooth fabric that I have right here. It felt like a wool, but honestly, I don't really wear the colors. I don't really like houndstooth. So I talked myself out of it. Fabric is really easy to resell online, but I just don't really want to keep a stock. This quilt was so cool. Uh, this is another regret not buying one. It's so bright and colorful and fun. I should have done it. I don't know what I was thinking. Overall, really, really impressed with their fabric section. And I will definitely be back to look at their fabrics another time. All right, I just finished out of the Seattle Children's Bargain Boutique. As always, it was amazing, as always. It's like a one to six employee ratio, so I don't film a ton in there because I feel really awkward because like, yeah, it's usually just me in there and about six or seven volunteers. <laughs> so, uh, but I got three amazing vases and I'm gonna turn you around. I'm right parked in front of their store for their store window. Their store window, I feel like really demonstrates the care they put into their store. I am always delighted. It is such a beautiful thrift shop. They mark all their fabric by the yard. The one thing is they know what their stuff is worth that's vintage because all their employees are 70 plus. Uh, so let me turn you around. Um, I don't know if you can see it there, but their window is just absolutely gorgeous. Uh, the shop is beautiful and the employees are always, yeah, I don't know. There's always just a gajillion employees I don't want to say following me because that's not the vibe. It's just that it's a small shop and there's six employees usually walking around. Gorgeous stuff. Very excited. Okay, I lied. I did get a little bit of footage here. Here are some really, really pretty tea sets and things. I was really tempted by a lot in this section, but this is a thrift store that sells by the set and I don't really want to buy by the set most of the time. These were absolutely stunning. These are maybe a regret, but it was $75 for the whole tea set and I didn't want the whole tea set, but I think I should have just gone for it and sold the pieces I didn't want on Mercari because it was probably half off. So yeah, a little, little bit of regret here, but that's what happens when you film your thrift. 
All right, I am outside the Salvation Army. I didn't take any footage in there, or I think the last two shops besides the antique store, which you will see that footage. I think I'll insert that probably about now. The first store, the St. Vincent de Paul, I think is what it's called. It was just a weird vibe. There was a man following around me around in a creepy way. So I got my patterns and I think I got a bowl and I left. I just didn't feel like filming because I was being creeped out. And then there was this woman yelling at this man. It was a lot. And then the second store was the Humane Society store. It just wasn't great today. They have not had a huge overturn of inventory. Actually, both of these shops haven't since the last time I was down here, which was in April. So yeah, I don't know, weird shops. And yeah, I went to the antique store, you'll see that footage. So one of the first things in the store was this rack of antique and vintage clothes. There was actually quite a bit of antique pieces. This was one of them that I was tempted by, but the inside was completely shredded. This is definitely something that I might end up going back for or hoping is here the next time, but it was just a little bit pricey for how bad of shape it was in. Spoiler alert, this dress I did end up getting, I thought this was a stunning 1940s dress. The measurements seemed to be my size and it wasn't too damaged. There were just a couple spots and I just thought it was stunning. And then this was kind of a similar gown. It has really, really beautiful beading and sequins and all that jazz. And I really like the trim. I just was not convinced my arms could fit in it. And then here is another late 1800s dress that I thought was really cool, but it was again, not in the best condition. And then in this other section of the store, there was this really, really great sewing booth. You can usually rely on one sewing booth in an antique shop. There were just oodles and oodles and oodles of buttons here. There I found one that I wanted exactly. But yeah, there, there was just, there was a lot of cool stuff here. It was a little bit overwhelming because there was so much, but I did really like looking through this booth. I do feel like I made kind of a mess because it was hard to sort through the buttons without making a mess. But like I said, there were just so many great button options and they had some really interesting sewing things in the display case. Honestly, I won't go find somebody to unlock a display case for me enough unless I can see a price. So display cases I look in, but I'm not really that interested most of the time. Cause like I said, I'm just, I'm not willing to put in the effort. But this one is really quite cool. And then here's another display case. I thought these two vases that were a pair were absolutely beautiful. I'm sure they'll be here next time I'm here, so if I really want them, I can get them. Antique malls don't turn over very quickly, so you can usually think on things. And then I just thought these were funny. I found these thrifting in Pennsylvania with a friend a long time ago. She found them, so they're hers, but I did get a couple of them online, so it's just always fun to see things you own in the shop. And I just went in the Salvation Army. I got a belt and I got a glass, and I am going to head over to Chipotle to eat lunch. I'm very, very hungry at this point. It's a little bit afternoon, so I I feel like now's a good time to eat. I only am going to Value Village after this, so we're pretty much almost done for the day. I'm gonna go eat, I'm gonna go to Value Village, and then I'm gonna pick up bubble tea from my favorite bubble tea place, which is right next door to Value Village. Otherwise, I wouldn't go to Value Village at all, honestly. But I'm pretty happy with my day so far, so I can't wait to get home and show you guys what I got. All right, I did go in the Value Village because it is mid-September and I wanted to see what their Halloween section was like. Much to my dismay, they were already in Christmas which is wild. Mid-September is too early. I mean, I guess not really when you're thrifting because you have to thrift so much earlier. They did have some like Halloween mixed in with the Christmas, which I thought was kind of hilarious. They did not have much in the way of bowls like what I was looking for here, which is kind of more of a soup bowl. So I didn't really pick anything up. I did think these were pretty, but those are for the whole set and I didn't want that. And then I did want to show you what's in the Halloween section. They did have some vintage and they just had some kind of costuming stuff. I think I got my camera dirty. Sorry for the weird blur. Definitely mostly cheap Halloween costumes this year. This is the faded Valley Village that one Halloween I found a gunny sacks here. I considered this shirt because I've been looking for one like it, but I had just ordered a silk one off thread it so I didn't need a Shein one. I thought this sparkly thing was kind of fun. It was interesting because they kind of group stuff in Halloween. Like this was their flower child section where they had like kind of these floral bosses with these jeans and the idea of wearing a blonde wig. I actually really liked these in the Value Village because to me, they really show how everyday clothes can be made into a costume, which is always way better for the planet than buying something cheap in polyester and only wearing it once. I'm not quite sure what these themes were. 
And then on this back section, they have their pirate theme section where they pulled like a bunch of blouses like these that are just kind of nice and pretty. And then they had like some different black things, like just a lot of things with like ruffles that if you wore those jeans, like a scarf and an eye patch, you could definitely be a pirate. Like I said, I just think these were very cool because it makes people think about clothes a little bit differently. And I'm a huge fan of that. Like your costume that you might wear might already be in your closet. Alrighty, I am back home. I have my bubble tea. That was obnoxious, sorry. I don't even know why I think drinking on camera is ever a good idea. I figured I'd walk you through my haul. I'm very excited. I feel like I kept very reined in until I went to the antique store. Overall, I didn't spend that much again until I went to the antique store. So let's kick it off with our first haul. This stack is from the St. Vincent de Paul on Central Avenue in Kent. So this is the first vase I got of the day. I really like it. It probably was only good for a bloom or two in it, but I actually think that's kind of the fun part about it. It was only $2, which I think was a great deal. It's gonna be probably not that fun to clean, but I think I can figure it out. There were a couple of vases there that I liked, but it was my first stop of the day, so I didn't really want to get them. And then the other thing I got there was fabric, which I did not plan on. I've been trying to haul less fabric unless it hits a certain number of things, including being above three yards and being garment fabric. Uh, and all of these hit those. So this first up is this eyelet. It has like little bows and stuff. It's very, very cute. It was only $2. And there's four yards here. I measured these while I was in the shop. I, I think that's a great price, obviously. And then next up, this was also $2. There's about three and a half yards here. And it's just very cute. I really liked their um, like pansies. And hi, Bean. Okay, uh, Spooky says hello. I'm gonna have to boot you. She just like crawled up the back of my chair like a dragon. I liked the purple colors in this. I thought it was really, really, really nice. And I can definitely see this making like a really cute little house dress. And you all know how I love stripe play. Okay, stop it, spooky. Jesus Christ. And then next up, was it really $3.99? Sorry, the other two were $3. This one was $2. I know how to read it, Miss Receipt maybe. But this is just some really great corduroy. I love corduroy. I don't buy it new that often because it's usually kind of expensive per yard, but I felt like this would be the perfect set of overalls and it would be a good material to use to try out for my denim since it was only $4 and my denim was like $12, $15 a yard. So I felt like this would be a good one to do a wearable mock-up in. So I'm pretty excited about that. So usually I don't find fabric in that store. So that was really interesting for me. Last time I went there, I didn't really like it. Honestly, that store is kind of dingy and not my fave. However, I will now definitely be marking it on my list because this was a fantastic haul of fabrics and I had to restrain myself. Like there were quite a few more fabrics that I was considering, but that wraps up the first shop. For the second shop I went to is the Seattle Children's Kent Bargain Boutique. I have two receipts because I was checking out and then I impulsively saw something. So let's talk through it. First up, this was not on my list of things I was allowed to buy, but it's this little forget-me-not teacup. It was... I'm confused. This receipt is very confusing. I think this was 30% off, but it has it as half percent off on this receipt. Ew, because I have two things that were $4.50. Um, $4 so this one was $4.50 with 30% off, which saved me $1.35 on it. It's just this really cute forget-me-not tape teacup. You guys know I love a forget-me-not. This isn't really anything that special. It's a Haveland & Co. France China, which I might look up and find out it is special. It's very translucent actually, which is neat. It is pretty worn on the handle, but I like just love a forget-me-not. Wow. Forget me not teacup theme or just in general. So I was pretty happy to find this one. And then we will continue into vase land. So I'll grab the two from the first receipt. This is the one that was 50% off. So this is only $2.25. It is just a blooms.net vase. So like nothing that special, but I really liked the color and the shape. I think this will fit a lot of bouquets like really well. Like I think this will be a good variety to have in my collection. And for $2.25, not mad. And then this guy here, I think I paid full price for. This was a, I think most expensive thing I bought until I got to the antique shop. It's $9.50 and it's handmade. I was excited about this because I love pottery. I do pottery. And so seeing anything like this is always really exciting. And I really liked the shape and color. I felt like this would fit well into my life and the types of bouquets I get. 
And then the last thing I got there was this, which was $6.55. I saw this in the background while I was checking out. It's this nice navy blue, whoever owns it put Velcro on the bottom. Wow, I can like hear the echo. Can you hear that? Um, but anyway, there's Velcro on the bottom strangely, but it's this really beautiful vase. I thought it would look really beautiful with flowers in it, obviously. And I really liked like the birds with the like cherry blossoms. I just thought this was really gorgeous. And it was, like I said, only $6.55 and I felt like that was a good deal. Uh, this place, prices are hit and miss. But they always, like, they price stuff to move. So if it's been there for more than a week, it goes 30, and then it goes 50, and then it goes 75% off. And then they had a ton of, I refrained myself, they had a ton of crystal on a $1 table. They get things to move. Um, they are not keeping it around. So if there is something like you love, you can always check back there. Next thrift shop I had a weird experience at. But it was not the vibe. And this is the Society of St. Vincent de Paul. This is the one in Auburn. This shop is pretty miss for me most of the time, but but it's so close to all the other shops. I always feel like it's worth stopping in because it is really cheap. That's the biggest thing. All of these shops I hit today, I hit because they're more affordable than a Goodwill or Value Village. So for example, this bowl. Oh my God, I can't believe how cheap this was was $1.94. It's this really cute, it's kind of like a 70s stoneware piece that has a little geese in the bottom and it's like the perfect size for my morning oatmeal. This is about what I eat serving size in the morning with my oatmeal. So I just thought it was absolutely perfect and really cute. There was a second I debated getting it and now that I see the price, I regret not getting it um, because less than $2, that's pretty great. Uh, and then these patterns were 38 cents each. This one, is like a petticoat slash slip pattern from I bet the 90s if I was to guess. Hey Sponks, can we not? Oh Jesus. You're getting spooky in her prime today. Hey. Hey. She's been really into climbing things lately, uh, which is obviously not my favorite thing for her to do. And then I also got probably 70s. It's like a blouse and I really like the shape of the collar and there's also a bow option. And there's just like a lot of little different versions you can do with this. So I figured I'd pick it up for, you know, 38 cents. Neither of these are patterns that I would pick up. I would say like normally like at an Etsy or anything like that, but at 38 cents, it's hard not to. Next one we went to from there was the Humane Society, which I usually have a lot more success on. This is the only thing I bought today that if I could go back, I wouldn't buy, if that makes sense. It was only $3, so I'm not too mad. The reason I picked it up is I actually have a ton of napkin rings that are this exact teapot, but just tiny. And so I was thinking about, you know, when I have a tea party, I can have this with my little teapot napkin rings and they can all match and be really cute. However, I don't really necessarily need this. You know what? I have it now, so I'll find a place to put it. Spunk! Sorry if you can hear her ripping things up. She's being quite rude. All right, and then the next shop I went to, actually the next shop I went to was the antique shop, but I'm gonna put that at the end because antiquing is different than thrifting. It's not as cheap. Wow, these things were cheap. So one of these is a bric-a-brac. It's just a glass. I use glasses about these size for when I make boba at home and honestly most of my glasses are really tiny. So I really liked this one. It's pretty scratched up. It's not in the best condition. However, it'll do for what I need it for and it was only 99 cents. And then I also got this really beautiful belt. It is like has this little flower button buckle. Oh my goodness. I got it to buckle at the store though, I think. Or did I just goof and buy something I can't even buckle? I might have to pull the buckle out a little bit, but it is this really beautiful gold belt. It has this beautiful gold like flower etching on it and it was only $2.99, so I kind of figured why not. This was at the Salvation Army. I don't, I don't know, I have a max, max time in the Salvation Army. I can only take Christian radio for so long. Brings up, you know, those pesky childhood memories. I didn't stay there very long, just quick enough to peruse the bric-a-brac and I guess the belts. I just saw this hanging over and I didn't know what it was and I got excited when it was belts. So that's the scoop on that. I only spent $4.39 there. So like I said, I was doing really well besides the antique shop. And then last up was savers. I feel like this will really demonstrate how much more expensive savers is or value village than everybody else. This was full price. So this was $4.99. I don't feel like that's a bad price for this, but if you compare it to say like this being two dollars these are more comparable so it's definitely like double uh what i paid for for something like this and yeah i would just say these are comparable i still really like this it's i know it's another blue but i like this shape it's very like bulbous and i can just see a lot of bouquets i get working really well in here 
Loki. And then the other things I got there were these earrings for $5.99. They're probably for a friend. I just liked them because they're very sapphic. So we'll see. I might end up holding on to them, but I just felt like they were a sapphic pair of floral earrings and why not? And then the last thing I picked up there was this really plain um, stoneware bowl from Japan. Just a plain blue glaze. This one was on sale for... $3.49, which again, I'll compare it to this really cute 70s piece, which was only, I think, $1.30. So it just, I, I feel like it really shows you, or I guess this one was maybe about two, how much more expensive the fact that this was $3.49. Oh, this one wasn't even on sale. So yeah, I just, I feel like that kind of shows how much more expensive Value Village is versus like your local smaller charity thrift shops because yeah, this is heckin' cute and this I would have bet would have been about $5.99 at Value Village. But that wraps up everything from the thrift store. So now we can talk antique. This antique mall was actually really fantastic. I wasn't sure what to expect because I'd never been there before, but the antique mall closest to me closed recently. And by recently, I mean a couple of years ago. I haven't really been in to scout any of the other ones, so I was pretty excited to try this one out. First thing I got was this whoo, blue dress. This was my most expensive thing. It was... $59. So this is a pretty flawed garment. I'm gonna have to be doing some repair work. There's some lace up here that has split that I'll just have to kind of cobble back together and repair. And then there's some staining just kind of throughout the dress along the hem. And then there's also, I would say these are probably bleach spots and not staining. There's also rhinestones throughout that I'm afraid will rust. I don't know, I have to kind of figure out my cleaning strategy for this one. I think it can be totally restored. I just have to figure it out, but I felt like for $59, this beautiful 1940s dress was absolutely worth it. And even if I can't get it as clean as I want it, I think it'll still be lovely and stains don't really bother me. All right, so I did want to show you a try on of this dress. It definitely doesn't really fit me. However, it's very beautiful. And while trying it on, I think... I can get this dress to fit me while doing reversible tailoring. So I'm thinking about like gathering it kind of up a bunch in the back and kind of pleating it there to get it just a little bit tighter. And then I'm trying to decide if there's a way to move the waist up in a way that would not be destructive for the dress. I don't like to make things smaller unless I have a plan on how to make it back to the larger size, just because there is already not enough larger vintage in the world. So I don't like to make anything smaller unless I can reverse it. So that's kind of my thoughts for this dress. I do think it's absolutely stunning and I think it'll be worth it to figure out all of these different things. And I guess the slip is actually fully detached, which is super neat. So this means I can use this under other pieces. So we love that. It's kind of a two for one actually. I kind of have almost like a 1940s slip with a 1940s dress. I also was thinking, Worst case scenario, I could maybe dye this one like a darker blue. I don't know. I'm kind of all over the place on how I'm going to salvage it, but I do think it's salvageable and I still think it was worth the price, even though it was still quite pricey. A dress like that, like already restored at a vintage shop would have probably been 120 to 150, maybe even 200, depending on the shop. So I was happy with that. And then I got this guy. Uh, this guy is more expensive than I'll usually buy for a linen, but I was not buying it for the linen part of the linen. I was buying it for the lace. This is really gorgeous. It's pretty old. I would say this is pretty decently old with lace. I would say it might even be antique. It was $32 and my plan is to figure out how to take the lace off, which is gonna be really hard because the stitches putting it on are really tiny. And then putting this onto a different piece. I think it's absolutely lovely. And so yeah, that's that's my game plan for this. I don't plan on keeping the fabric in the middle really at all. I'll probably keep it to use as a rag, but the lace is beautiful. And then next up, I'll show you all of these close up. I got, it looks like four packs of buttons, uh, two packs of blue buttons and two packs of white buttons. So we're kind of on theme. I think the more you, like if you bought one or more, you got half off or they were trying to sell down their button collections. I don't quite know, but these were definitely half off, which I was surprised by and very happy with. All these button packages varied between two and five dollars. And I think I probably have a couple more floating in the bag. I'll show you close ups of all of these. They really are beautiful and I'm very excited about them. And then last up, I have all of the different glass things I got there. So first up, I got a vase. I went back and forth. There are a lot of blue vases there I really loved, but I liked this one the best, even though I was deciding between like Fenton pieces and pieces that were like higher value. I just really liked the stripiness of this one. I just felt like it was more unique and I also liked how clear it was. 
because I like being able to see the stems in the bouquets like I like being able to see the stem and the one behind me and I just think this will have like I don't know I just think this one's really beautiful so I picked it up I think this one was $12 18 this was $18 and I think it's quite lovely so that's that we have a lot of blue vases shouldn't surprise you my decorations are pretty teal blue and um pink so that like checks out oh spooky has already gone in the antique store bag so this one i picked up this is a depression wear plate i believe it was six dollars it has these beautiful roses etched in it i hadn't really seen this pattern before I see a lot of plain ones or ones with like swirls around it but i use glass plates like this a lot when i eat i eat a lot of bagels or fruit off of them they're kind of like my snack plate cake whatever uh they all come off these plates uh, but anytime i use a glass plate like this it just makes me happy I don't know I don't really have an explanation for it but it does it makes me happy and then the last thing is this piece of candle wick glassware I plan on probably eating off of this I guess let me know down below if that's a terrible idea but again this would be something that I would just eat whatever I eat off of plates off of um yeah I just I know a lot of people keep their glassware collections really display I do like to use mine I have some blue depression plates that are stunning that every time I eat off of them they just make me really really happy while yes we want to protect these for future generations we also don't want to not use them because that they their objects are made to be used and like not to like overly personify the object but I feel like it's sad to be an object just stared at all the time and never used for your purpose so yeah uh same with like all the vases a lot of times I feel like people will not be weird about putting water in vases they're fully coated to be functional so I just I don't see why not I don't know I just think objects are made to be used just the same way I feel like clothing is made to be worn but yeah I'm pretty happy with this um, like I said the antique shop was blew my budget for the antique shop I think I was well under a hundred I don't think I was quite under 50 but I was definitely under 75 so I just think that's pretty cool because if you've been with me on this channel I've been working on really mindfully thrifting and everything I got here for the most part was on my list or things I knew I would actively use. I now have one, two, three, four, five, six, six new vases. So I, I don't think I'll go like on a big thrift journey just for vases again. I'll keep my eye out for ones that I feel like are really special. I only got two bowls. There was a real lack in bowls um, on this trip. And then the fabric I got all like I said matched my intent the dress I guess is like the silliest thing the dress and the thing with the lace but I know I'll use that lace eventually um, and I do know I'll put in the work to restore the dress I've restored now quite a few pieces that are vintage so I feel a lot more confident in my skills to restore vintage so I'm pretty excited to I guess give that a go um I, I've been really growing these skills and that basically wraps this up I hope you enjoy I gave you the pretty much exact locations of all these shops if you're local to Washington or Seattle area because I don't believe in gatekeeping. There is more than enough objects to go around for everybody on this earth. So definitely check those out if you're in the area. They're my favorite thrift shops. I only go to them about once every six months to make sure there's full turnover. We're back to every other week sewing content for the rest of this year. I had been doing the six weeks of spooky sewing, but it is too much for me to sew every single week. So we're back on the every other and I hope you guys enjoy the other content. We'll see probably a lot of thrifting videos over the next few months because I'll be home in Colorado where I really like to thrift and I hope you enjoy hopefully continuing with my journey of thrifting a little bit more mindfully and with that I'm going to say goodbye and I will see you next time. Bye!